This is a reading on prayer from the book Wounded by Love, The Life and Wisdom of Elder Porfirios. On prayer, pray to God with fervor and love in a calm state of mind, with meekness and gentleness, without forcing yourself. The Lord himself will teach us how to pray. Man seeks joy and happiness in heaven. He seeks what is eternal, far from everyone and everything. He seeks to find joy in God. God is a mystery. He is silence. He is infinite. He is everything. Everyone possesses this inclination of the soul for heaven. All people seek something heavenly. All beings turn towards him albeit unconsciously. Turn your mind towards him continually. Learn to love prayer, familiar converse with the Lord. What counts above all is love, passionate love for the Lord, for Christ the Bridegroom. Become worthy of Christ's love. In order not to live in darkness, turn on the switch of prayer so that divine light may flood your soul. Christ will appear in the depths of your being. There in the deepest and most inward part is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is within you. Prayer is made only with the Holy Spirit. It teaches the soul how to pray. For we know not what to pray, for as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. It's not necessary for us to make any effort. We should address ourselves to God in the manner of a humble servant, with a voice of entreaty and supplication. Then our prayer will be well-pleasing to God. Let us stand devoutly before the cross of Christ and say, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. That says everything. When the mind moves in prayer, divine grace comes in a split second. The person then becomes full of grace and sees everything with different eyes. The important thing is to love Christ, prayer, and meditation on his words. In prayer, human effort represents only a tiny millionth part. Before we pray, the soul must prepare itself with prayer. Prayer for prayer. Listen to the prayer which the priest recites secretly during the divine liturgy while the apostle is being read. Shine in our hearts, O loving Master, the pure light of your divine knowledge, and open the eyes of our mind to understanding the proclamation of your gospel. Instill within us fear of your blessed commandments, so that trampling down all fleshy desires, we may lead to a spiritual life, thinking and doing everything with a view to pleasing you. For you are the illumination of our souls and bodies, O Christ our God, and to you we ascribe glory, along with your Father who is without beginning, and your all holy and good and life-giving spirit, now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. We enter into prayer without realizing it. We need to find ourselves in appropriate surroundings. Converse with Christ, conversation, the reading of the scripture, the singing of psalms, the light of the oil lamp, the fragrance of incense all create the appropriate atmosphere so that everything happens naturally in simplicity of heart. As we read the divine offices with love, we are sanctified without being aware of it. The divine words fill our hearts with gladness. This gladness of heart, this joy is our effort so that we enter easily into the atmosphere of prayer. It's our warm-up, as you might say. We may call to mind beautiful images from landscapes we have seen, 
the effort is gentle without bloodshed. But don't let us forget what the Lord said. Without me, you can do nothing. The Lord himself will teach us how to pray. We won't learn prayer on our own, nor will anyone else teach us it. Don't let's say to ourselves, I have made such and such a number of prostrations, so now I have secured divine grace. But rather let us make entreaty for the pure light of divine knowledge to shine within us and open our spiritual eyes so that we may understand his divine words. In this way, without realizing it, we love God without contorting ourselves and without exertion and struggle. What is difficult for man is easy for God. We will love God suddenly when grace overshadows us. If we love Christ very much, the prayer will say itself. Christ will be continually in our mind and in our heart. If, however, we are to remain in this state and not to lose it, we require divine eros, divine burning love for Christ. Eros directs itself to a higher being. The lover, God, desires the beloved and the beloved strives to reach the lover. The lover loves his beloved with a divine and perfect love. God who loves mankind is selfless. Love towards God is a higher love when it is expressed as thanksgiving. It is necessary for us to love not as a duty, but just in the way that it is necessary for us to eat. Often we approach God out of necessity to lean on him because we find no repose in all the things around us, and we feel deserted. <laughs>